every minute with the fever dreams I push a mind to a limit where it needs to be I work like I got vision I don't need to see I'm picking mind over matter I believe in me I need to find more hours in the day to breathe Need to find more power in the way I be And when my mind turns out with the painful scenes I need to scream out loud I can't stop me I wanna be the greatest like Rocky You know I leave them all hating like a hobby I'm out here making moves like a lobby And if you ain't with me it's you I see I got my mind on the facts I'm a python grab what I like real fast Took it till I have everything I attack Everything that I lack everything that I want And I see matter of fact I'm my own worst enemy Only if I let it be I can control anything If I can just think carefully I control my destiny Deep up in my mind I manifest it Every morning I wake up obsessed and Everything I do I do the best And deep within my mind You know I'll always manifest it Hey guys, it's Joey's Adventures here, and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, I went to Hill Aerospace Museum, located in Ogden, Utah. Anyways, today's a great video. Also, I apologize in advance for the horrible quality. This is sh this has been shot on my iPhone. Well, it's actually not an I iPhone; it's actually an Android phone. But in the very but very soon, my next vlogs will have better quality and will not look like this. So, for the time being, you guys will have to stick with the cell phone footage, but very soon that will change. Anyways, we saw a lot of really cool stuff at this airplane museum. And if you live close to this aerospace museum, then I highly recommend that you check it out. Anyways, guys, enjoy the rest of the video. This is a nice big group. It's going to be kind of hard to, to, to have you all ask me questions, but don't be bashful. His name is Charles Taylor, and he was the person that helped operate the Wright Brothers bicycle business. And he also helped them build their airplane. And Charles Taylor built that engine that the Wright Brothers had because nobody built an engine that was suitable for flight back then. And today, one of the most important things that we do here at Hill Air Force Base is to repair airplane engines. World War II, it was the big old gasoline piston engines, but now, what kind of engines do you suppose we do? And then the wood frame is covered with cloth. The cloth is painted, and that makes the cloth shrink up really, really tight, so it looks like it's metal, and it's actually cloth, and that's this here. Then we uh, walk along here, and this is a really, really super old gun. Uh, it, uh, it's over a hundred years old, and so why do we have a gun at an airplane factory? I mean, at an airplane museum, I mean. The reason is because this uh, uh, base, the Hill Air Force Base, uh, was uh, uh, built next to a storage facility for World War I aircraft. Uh, World War I, after World War I, there was thousands and thousands of tons of World War I ordnance, and that means guns and munitions and old trucks and stuff, and so, the army, they said, where are we going to put all of this leftover stuff from World War I? Somebody said, I got an idea. Let's stick it out in the Utah desert over by Ogden. And that's exactly what they did. And that become, became the Ogden uh, uh, Ordnance Depot. And so World War II starts to look like it's going to happen. And they decided that they needed a base to maintain all of the aircraft that were going to be built. Where are we going to put it? Hey, I got an idea. Let's put it over next to the Ogden Ordnance Depot. We already own some land there, and some more land has been made available to us. So let's put the Hill Air Force Base right over there, and that's the reason it's here. It's 
started back in 1939. And the museum is here to tell you about those things and to preserve these airplanes. So the guy just got done. I had to do some other stuff. So right here, this is a bomber. I don't know if these are real bombs or not. Probably not, or at least deactivated. Right there, there's the ball turret. That is the most dangerous place you can sit in in uh, World War II because you get shot at and there's glass and if you fall out of it, and most of the time you have a parachute or something like that. But this is a pretty impressive bomber. There's another one clear over there, but we'll take a look at that later. But look at the size of these wheels. I can't get close to it. Uh, well, this is the closest I can get, but it's pretty impressive. Absolutely incredible, dude. That's a lot of kills there. I believe I count, let's see, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 kills. This fighter plane right here shot down 18 Nazi aircraft. That's crazy. Who in the world would have guessed that ladies could be really good airplane engine mechanics? We were caught up in the war that uh, there was nobody around to build the engines and to take care of them. The ladies stepped up and you know what, I don't know exactly what they said, but something like, we can do it. And you know what? They did it. They did it. And so we want to pay tribute to those ladies that did that. Notice all of those crosses on the side of the airplane. It was flown uh, by a major Eagleton. And we know he was a good pilot because every time he shot down a German airplane, he got one of those crosses there. And you really have to be good to shoot down so many airplanes and not get killed yourself. Being a fighter pilot was super, super dangerous, yes. So, there's half a cross on there. What is the half cross? Ask what the half a cross is. Well, I'm going to tell you. War is not fair. And a rule of war is you make it as unfair as possible to your benefit. So, in this case, he and another pilot in another airplane teamed up together and they shot down some poor uh, German airmen. And so they share the victory. If they tore it up real close, and you notice that some of the bullets have a red tip on them, and that's not for decoration. That's to mark that bullet as being a traitor. Where the bullets are going, and you can correct your aim. Notice that this airplane is a bomber. It's the B-24 has four engines on it. It's a big airplane. One of the, this is the, the man named Richard Baum, and uh, Richard Baum uh, flew an airplane just like this. It's called the P-38. It's the only American fighter with two engines. And uh, this was picked up uh, off of, uh, it crashed on an island up near Alaska. That's the original propeller and the original engine off of it. So you can see that there was a lot of cosmetics that went into repairing this. Korean uh, uh, battle, the Korean War, and you can see the transition from propeller to jets. Notice the jet here. So in the Korean War, most fighters, well, many of the fighters were jets, but not all. Some of them were still World War II fighters, and they used them in the Korean conflict 
that the Korean conflict was the last conflict where propeller fighters were used. These uh, airplanes are airplanes that have been moved out, and the reason that they have been moved out is because we're in the process of, of doubling the floor, indoor floor space that we now have. That, during the, the Johnson, uh, uh, President Johnson era, uh, he, he has actually been flown around in that airplane. Any airplane that is carrying the President of the United States is called Air Force One. Even if it was a hang glider, that would be Air Force One. But uh, if the President of the United States is not in it, then it goes by the tail number. There's a number on the tail. The airplane would be identified by that tail number. But if on the radio, if the person in the airplane says, this is Air Force One, we're, pre we're descending for a landing at a certain airport, then that airport would have a protocol. That means there would be automatic things that start to happen for the security of the president. But the only time the airplane would be identified as Air Force One is if the President of the United States is in the airplane. That's the only time. Okay, that was a very good question. So is that one of the first original Air Force One airplanes? What, what's that? Uh, is that the Back first? There? Yeah. Actually, there can, at any time there can be several airplanes used at Air Force One. That airplane that would be an Air Force One to go out to the ranch with, not one to fly across the ocean to project power. That's a, you'd fly, today it would be a 747 is Air Force One, and if you want to project the awesome power of the United States, you would fly Air Force One. Also, anymore, there's so many security people and so many uh, people that have to follow the president around to prepare uh, uh, for his security that it takes a very large airplane to transfer. In fact, it takes two of them. There'd be Air Force One and a second airplane with a lot of security people. Armored cars might be in it. Uh, uh, to transport the president. The president could be uh, uh, very well presumed to be a target of some people that don't like the United States very much. So there's a lot of security that surrounds the president. So let's Can't wait to see an SR seventy one. <laughs> so are these like Vietnam era jets? Uh, these, uh, yes, they are, and these are aircraft that came along after the Korean conflict. These are all called the Delta winged airplanes. They all have really radically swept back wings. The wings kind of point towards the rear of the airplane. So this is Delta-class aircraft along here. This is an airplane that was used in Vietnam very extensively, and a plane very similar to this. This is called the, the uh, F-105. F stands for fighter, and it was used in Vietnam extensively and a, a variant of this airplane was used as a trainer. This, the trainer version is called the T-38. Those pointy things on the nose of the airplanes. Some people think that those are little guns. They are not guns. They are called a pitot tube. And pitot, it's a French word. Pitot. It's a French word, and what it's for when the airplane is moving fast through the air, it activates a sensor inside the tube that's hooked to a dial, a gauge in the instrument panel, 
and it tells the pilot how fast he's going through the air. That's what that's for. It's a sensor to, that tells the pilot how fast he's going through the air. This is important that he know that because if he goes too slow, he'll just drop like a stone. So that's what that's for. A very good question. I have a good question. How did you get the wings up like that? The wings, uh, there's a hydraulic uh, ram. And a, it's a thing, the a gadget that works from hydraulic pressure, oil pressure, that forces the wings up like that. And the reason they do that is that airplane was built to go aboard a carrier. How many here know what a carrier is? Me! Lady back here, anybody else? Carrier? Well, what's a carrier? In Vietnam, was to fly a wild weasel mission. Because when they, they would go, the wild weasels would go out in advance of a bombing mission, and they would actually try and get the enemy to turn on the radars and to try and shoot them down and then the wild weasels would get a fix. That means they would figure out exactly where those gun positions were or where those radar positions are and they would notify uh, the uh, commanders that are planning a bombing mission as to where these gun radars, that's advanced warning system, and uh, take them out for the gun positions. But it was a dangerous, dangerous mission to fly. That little propeller sticking out the side, that would, all, that would pop out of the system. All the emergency systems are called Can you tell me a little bit about the SR-71? I sure can. Part of, mm -hmm. Some of the blades are part of the rotor, that's the top propeller. Have, some of the blades have been re removed. I'm not sure why that is so. But anyway, this airplane here is called the SR-71. This is the fastest manned jet airplane ever built. And it is fast. Let me tell you what fast means. Are you ready for this? It means three times faster than my voice travels over here and reaches your ear. That's fast. It's about 2,100 miles an hour. What about that one? Is that a Chinook? Yes. Let's talk a little bit more, before we talk about this, let's talk a little bit more about the SR-71. This is an engine out of it, a jet engine. And that jet engine is more powerful. Some of you may have heard of the great big passenger ship, the Titanic, that got sunk. A huge ship. It has several engines on that big ship, and that engine right there is more powerful than all of the engines together on the Titanic. It's a lot more powerful. And as I said, the airplane goes three times faster than sound. Now, I'm going to talk about a scientific term, and it's called frictional heat. If you take your hands and you rub them together really hard and fast, you can feel them warm up. That's frictional heat. Well, the air at those high speeds rubs so hard on that airplane that if it was made out of aluminum metal, like most airplanes, it would melt. And I want to tell you, if you are on an airplane that's melting down around you, you are in bad trouble. That's a fact. So they make the airplane out of titanium so that uh, you don't have that problem with it melting. So anyway, but the purpose of this airplane is not to bomb, not to shoot, but it is a spy plane. And it can fly really, really high. High means about 90,000 feet. And they want it to get up high to keep it out of the range of any aircraft fire or, or, or surface to air missiles. It's in front of the engine and that shockwave has to be managed and they manage it by moving that cone in and out. That shockwave has to be carefully managed before it goes into the engine or the engine will stall out. That means it'll quit running. So that cone moves in and out 
to manage the shock wave and that shock wave is a variable with speed. So let's move along. This is a troop carrying helicopter or it can carry uh, a lot of munitions or whatever is required. Look at the size of these engines, dude. Holy crap. This is one of our newest acquisitions. We don't have the wings on it yet. Probably the pilot could even be in the United States. But there would be television cameras on that drone and they can look at the ground and they can pick out a target. And the wings aren't on it yet, but the airplane, it can carry a missile it's called the Hellfire Missile, and it's really that. And the person from the ground can aim that missile at the target and take it out. Is this the same drone that take out the one uh, Iranian leader? I don't know that for sure, but it could have been. It is an old one. Hmm. They have more advanced drones than this one now. What's the orange one? And that is a very, very early... Uh, it's a drone also, and uh, it is used for gunnery practice. Also, oh, they shoot at it. They would shoot at it for gunnery practice. But this one is called the, the, uh, the predator. predator. So what's this the? Is a, this is go ahead. So what's the one right there, the small uh -huh. one? Aha! That's a good question. So what is this funny-looking little? airplane and it is an airplane it's a decoy it's a decoy and the, the big bombers like the b-52 could carry that decoy and there are sensors on the airplane and they can say hey you got a missile following your tail a heat seeking it's called the a-10 and the a-10 carries the, the machine gun just like this you can see the end of the machine gun there. You can see the end of it pointing out of the A-10. And that A-10 can saw the gun on it, can saw down a telephone pole in just a couple of seconds. I think we need to send a few of these to Ukraine, you know? Uh -huh. They can take out that 40 mile long convoy, if that's thing, right? Yeah, and you know what? That's a good observation. I thought about that in the Ukraine and saw that big long convoy of tanks and trucks and stuff and that is especially what that is built for is to take out ships because they have a huge bullet on them you can see the bullets right there and those bullets are really heavy they can be armed with explosive bullets or just very super heavy bullets that's a technicality that i rarely discuss but the a10 if you notice it has that little scoop underneath there and that picks up the smoke from the gun and it lets that smoke out at a place where it doesn't get sucked in by the engine. The trub trouble with it is that in just a three second burst it can release so much oxygen depleted air and it gets sucked into the engine then the engine nearly quits and it slows down and there are times when maybe a three second uh, uh, loss of power can be fatal to the airplane and the pilot. Now the pilot sits inside of what they call the titanium metal bathtub. The sides of the airplane are there's armor plating there to protect the pilot against ground fire. And there's uh, the windshield is about that thick. Now that windshield looks frosted. That's because it's got a coating on it to protect a good time of deterioration and to keep light out of the interior, too much light out of the interior. Light uh, on anything plastic or paint or anything, light causes it to uh, uh, deteriorate. So what Any I noticed. Questions? So what I notice is this great uh, A10 Warthog is green and gray, uh -huh. while the ones in Afghanistan and the newer ones are gray. Is there like multiple ones that have been upgraded over the years? I don't know the answer, but that depends on the theater of war. 
Um, sometimes uh, they'll put a green on top and paint a kind of blue underneath uh, so that the, the, the blue or the blue-gray underneath kind of blends with the sky. Uh, so if you're on the ground and you're looking up, but if you're over the top of the airplane, it's green on top, and the green kind of will blend with foliage on the ground. So it's just so that it doesn't stand out too brightly to an attacker. This is not a look-alike. This is the actual airplane. That was used by the Thunderbirds, and you can see all of those flags on it, and that represents all of the nations that the Thunderbirds performed in. The Thunderbirds were a stunt team, and that is not an ordinary F-16. That is a hot rod F-16. That means the engines have been souped up and made more powerful than the stock engines so that it can go uh, perform some of the crazy maneuvers that it does with air shots. So they're still training at Hill, the F-16? No. They're not doing that anymore. F-35s now. The F-16s have been moved out. They're okay. still being used. Why they are still training in F-16s for the Hill Air Force Base is training F-35 pilots. I think there's, by the way, again, we talked a little bit about the importance of Hill Field. Uh, uh, six, at least six, of the F-16s that were stationed here at Hill Field have been moved overseas because of the Ukrainian thing and it's to bolster the NATO uh, forces there. So, any other questions? So, how fast could this? 70, there was 76 here, so I guess there's 70 F 16s here now. How fast could this plane go? About double the speed of sound. Double the speed of like, so like Mach 2? Yeah. Mach 2. Mach, Mach, by the way, the speed of sound is a variable. So, the tour just got done and. Me and my friend over here, Javen, are going to go around the whole facility and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and my opinions about all these aircraft and tell you guys what I know about them. Um, this is the type of cannon they use on the... Uh, that's insane. It's like an A-10 type of cannon. I would touch it, but you know, the rule. I assume these are simulators. Uh, the one I went to Seattle, I may have a video of that on my vlog channel too. But I've been inside of an SR-71 cockpit before, and it was really cool. Uh, what is really interesting is this fighter jet is bigger than the F-16s over here, which are what those are. And look at the size of those missiles. Imagine driving a car and you get hit with those, Javen. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> McDonnell Douglas F4C Phantom 2. Oh, they use these in Vietnam. That's cool. Hey, Joey. What's up, Bridger? So, right here, these are. This reminds me of the one Transformer helicopter. The bad guy is part of the Decepticons. It kind of looks like that type of helicopter. These look like cargo or troop transport helicopters. These are pretty sick looking. You know, I'm more of an airplane guy, but I can appreciate these helicopters too because they're pretty sweet looking as well. Um, pretty old. They probably don't use these anymore. Uh, yeah, they, I don't think they use this anymore. You know what? This may be a Soviet helicopter. No, it's not. It's a U.S. Never mind. They have a Soviet helicopter that looks really similar to it. I'm not a helicopter guy, a guy so I don't know. I can't really say a lot. This is another big plane. It doesn't too have it doesn't have two engines like the other one. Uh, the engines are really cool. That looks like it might just be a vent over it, which is weird. They're like blocking it. Um, these are two seaters. I think this is this may be a no. That's a Vietnam craft, a Vietnam aircraft. Uh, that's a pretty big aircraft right there. Uh, this is the Republic F-10 5D. Thunder Chief, never, never heard of it. Probably a Vietnam aircraft. Never seen it personally before. Another Korean War probably aircraft, I would say. Not exactly sure. This is a, a Douglas A1E. 
Sky Raider. Uh, the wings fold up because they use this on aircraft carriers and that's how they store them, which is actually really sick. This airplane right here, I'm pretty sure this is a Cessna, one of the early versions of the Cessna. Uh, in the United States Air Force, uh, you first train in a Cessna, and yes, I was right, it's in Cessna. Let's go, let's so go. It's a Skymaster one. Um, but yeah, they you they would use this aircraft to train pilots before they get into jets because this plane's a lot more easier to maneuver, a lot easier to train than with a fighter jet. This aircraft right here, no idea. It looks cool. It looks sick with the propellers, and it's the guy, the tour guide didn't mention these airplanes on top that are hanging. That's another aircraft. No idea what that is, and that's a biplane up there. Um, that's some other airplane. That's a huge fighter jet. Had it, it has its gear it up, so. Impressive looking aircraft. Let me tell you, my guys. This looks like a, a bomber type of aircraft right here. This is a Douglas A26B Invader. It's a black bomber type of aircraft. I think they used it in the Vietnam War because there's a map of Vietnam. Not Vietnam, a map of Korea over there. Uh, we have another World War One cannon. We talked about the biplanes a little bit already. Uh, right here we have the Shooting Star, the Lockheed F-80 Shooting Star. That's a cool looking aircraft. Really cool. This is another World War II bomber, but there we have more bombers outside, which we're gonna go ahead and take a look at. Oh, oh, we gotta take a look at this. We gotta take a look at this. Oh my gosh. That's an aircraft carrier. That's an aircraft carrier. Oh, look at that. That is so sick looking. That is sick. This is an aircraft carrier in World War II. And these are all the pilots, I guess, on the walls, which is sick. You know? Very good. Very nice. Very sick. Right, we're going into the gift shop, and we're gonna have to get some of these stuff. Oh, no way, no way. They have an SR-71 toy. That's how fast we're going. Probably we're going faster in real life, but. Remove before, remove before flight. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that is so sick. There's a lot of shirts here. I'm gonna, I'm getting at least a magnet here. Because I think that'd be awesome. Uh, get license plate stuff. Oh, you can get some bombers. A blimp? No way. You can get a blimp? And a space shuttle? That is sick. You can get a space shuttle. Look, guys, there's a Lego SR-71. That's so sick. There's so much uh, SR-71 stuff here. Wow, that's so cool. Ooh, I'm gonna have to get a magnet at least. Ooh. Oh, no way. These are sick, dude. Why are they carved out like that? That's weird. Bullet. Oh, these are bottle openers. Okay. Oh, look at that model, guys, of the SR71. That's awesome. It is sick. Nope, <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I want to have something that says... I'm going to try to mag find a magnet that says... Hill Air Force Museum. There we go. And I'm going to get a magnet that has an airplane on it. SR-71s. So they don't have SR-71s? That's not cool. But I guess I'll get an A-10, because those are sick. But yeah, this is a pretty cool museum. Especially the, especially the little toy airplanes over here. No idea what this is. I'm going to say, oh, it's a transport. It's a military transport plane. And it's huge. Look at the tires on this thing, dude. It's insane. And I assume that you probably can't touch these aircraft either. Yeah, I'm probably, just to be safe, I would touch them, but 
uh, just, uh, but for safety reasons and just to be safe, I am not gonna touch these things. Even though these things are beautiful, dude. Here's the landing gear. Absolutely incredible. These are some big planes. Dude, imagine eating underneath an airplane, dude. This is crazy. There, there, there's, a, there's an F, uh, there's a Phantom right there, an F4 Phantom, which is sick. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a transport plane. I think they transport people. Not sure if it's just across the ocean. Well, you know what? It probably could fly over the ocean if it really wanted to. But pretty impressive plane, that's for sure. Uh, what's its name? I'm pretty sure I missed the sign. I was looking for, uh, a sign that says do not touch. This is a Globemaster 2. Oh, yes, that's right. So the Globemaster, the current Globemaster is a jet aircraft. This is the second one, right? It's a heavy lifter, um, and it carries a lot of transportation. Like, it carries, like, in this photo, a truck, like a trailer tr for a truck, right? For a semi-truck. So this thing would, like, carry tanks, armored vehicles, all types of insane stuff. And look at the blades on these things, dude. You can walk into it and, you know, die if you wanted to, but... Not gonna do that, but that's crazy. We're gonna have to check out more of these aircraft in a little bit. No idea what this is. I'm gonna say, oh, it's a transport. It's a military transport plane. And it's huge. Look at the tires on this thing, dude. It's insane. And I assume that you probably can't touch these aircraft either. Yeah, I'm probably, just to be safe, I would touch them, but uh, just, uh, but for safety reasons and just to be safe, I am not going to touch these things. Even though these things are beautiful, dude. Here's the landing gear. Absolutely incredible. These are some big planes. Dude, imagine eating underneath an airplane, dude. This is crazy. There, there's, a, there's an F, uh, there's a Phantom right there, an F4 Phantom, which is sick. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a transport plane. I think they transport people. Not sure if it's just across the ocean. Well, you know what? It probably could fly over the ocean if it really wanted to. But pretty impressive plane, that's for sure. Uh, what's its name? I'm pretty sure I missed the sign. I was looking for, uh, a sign that says do not touch. This is a Globemaster 2. Oh, yes, that's right. So the Globemaster, the current Globemaster is a jet aircraft. This is the second one, right? It's a heavy lifter, um, and it carries a lot of transportation. Like, it carries, like, in this photo, a truck, like a trailer tr for a truck, right? For a semi-truck. So this thing would, like, carry tanks, armored vehicles, all types of insane stuff. And look at the blades on these things, dude. You can walk into it and, you know, die if you wanted to, but... Not gonna do that, but that's crazy. We're gonna have to check out more of these aircraft in a little bit. So right here, this is the U3 Blue Cluno. I don't know how the heck you pronounce it. It's a twin prop aircraft. Probably like a trainer, just like the Cessna. That is my guess, absolutely could be wrong. Uh, pretty awesome looking airplane if you ask me. Ares, that's probably the aircraft serial number. Um, we go over here, I saw a little bit of this airplane out here. Pretty sure these things out here are fuel tanks. Could absolutely be wrong. I am not. I don't know too much about this aircraft. I just know a lot about the SR-71, the A-10, and apparently this is an F-89 Scorpion. And that's a sick name for an aircraft. And do they, I imagine you guys have to use ladders to get to climb into the cockpit, you know? Um, U.S. Air Force. This is sick, bro. It's one of the sickest aircrafts. Um, these look like vents, so I don't know why you need vents here. So maybe it is fuel or something, because maybe you need to keep the fuel cool so it doesn't blow up. I don't know. That's my guess. Uh, let me go, Ted. Go ahead and check out this aircraft right here. Um, this is the, yeah, 7F crosshair 2 this plane was almost 
that almost was. Okay, hold on. Let me say again. The plane that almost was. Not all planes make it into the U.S. Air Force fleet. When the Air Force needed a faster fl uh, fighter jet for close air support and ground attacks, a 2A7D strike fighter went under a major reconfiguration. Each received an upgrade engine, stronger wings, and a longer fuselage. Unfortunately for the Yah uh, 7F, the Air Force uh, close ground attack version of the F-16 instead. Not close. Uh, choose the F-16 instead. So this plane almost got into service, but because of the F-16, it didn't because the U.S. Air Force decided to go for that one. And it's kind of similar to the uh, Korean War, sort of, where they have the big air tanks in the front instead of the sides, just like the other aircraft. And jeez, I love how big this airplane is. And keep in mind, this is the Globemaster 2. This is the... This is the little brother, not little brother, this is the older brother of the uh, Globemaster 3. And man, you can get so close. Imagine, um, imagine in an airplane, imagine just standing in the middle of the, like, standing like in the middle of a runway and you see this airplane land and the wheels just miss you. That would just be insane, dude. You know? No idea what these things are used for. Not gonna touch that because I don't wanna get in trouble and there's something up there. Like a bird's nest or something. Uh, I wanna check out this airplane. This looks like a transport plane. No idea what it is. It could be a transport plane. I'm gonna go with it's a transport plane. Uh, it's a twin propeller and it's a C7 carb you no runway required most planes required a paved runway for successful takeoff and landing not the whatever it's called the rigged carb uh, whatever was a, a stall or short takeoff and landing transport stall made the c7 essential during the vietnam war when it transported troops and supplies to isolated locations ah so they use this war not war they use this plane in the vietnam war and in vietnam vietnam doesn't have a lot of paved runways so they used this plane to land in fields and stuff to transport uh, supplies and troops, which is really cool. This plane right here is huge. This is a nuclear bomber. They used this plane to drop nuclear bombs or would have used it to drop nuclear bombs on their enemies. Luckily, we haven't used this plane yet, which I'm so good. Uh, I'm so glad I, uh, which I'm so glad they didn't use. And it's called the B-1 Lancer. Um, it's the backbone. It's the backbone of the long, long range bomber force, and I believe they're still using this airplane to this day. And they and they also use this as a normal bomber, but can also carry nuclear bombs as well. You know. Also, those are the jet engines for it. The wheels are insane. We're going to the back, and then I'm gonna take a look over here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and eat. Then we'll go ahead and check out the rest of these aircraft. But jeez, this is a big bomber. You know. Imagine being in Afghanistan or Iraq and you see this thing fly above you dropping bombs on the enemy, you know? Uh, and they covered the engines. I don't know why they did that. You know, that's kind of stupid. And that's an interesting looking helicopter. I'm gonna have to come and visit that again. Uh, but yeah, that's a B-2, well not B-2, uh, but this is a, uh, a bomber aircraft, right? They drop nuclear bombs out of this one. Um, and conventional bombs too, so that's really sick. Right here, this is probably a military transport plane for like the generals or something. It's called the T-39 Scarab Liner. So it is like a cargo plane slash transport plane. Uh, it is really cool. No weapons. It's just more A to B transportation thing, which is actually really cool. And we'll go into the back of this aircraft, just for you wonderful folks, for you wonderful folks watching. And uh, this is the back of the one Vietnam plane. And here's a back view of this massive Globemaster II, which is insane. So this looks like a allied. Ooh, I know this airplane. I just can't put my name on it. What's the point of this little thing? Huh. Pretty cool looking airplane for sure. There's like, like red lights or sirens on it. 
We got the tail rudder. Pretty cool looking airplane. Doesn't look like it's shot down anything because there's no, there's nothing on it that indicated that it shot anything down. This airplane is a T-28 uh, Tydra. I don't know how the heck you pronounce that. It's a uh, an American fighter plane. Sick. Um, I want to take a look at this airplane over here. It's pointing at the church that I spot when I was uh, heading down here. This looks like a, some sort of military transport plane right here. That's my guess, you know? That's a F2 Phantom, I think, or an F4 Phantom. Yeah, that's an F4 Phantom, not F2. Um, and it's a fighter that can do it all, apparently. Sick airplane right here. Uh, oh, I have so much I need to talk about that about that airplane. That airplane is sick. Uh, no, not much, Bridger. I'm to look at planes. Yeah. So yeah, this airplane right here. Uh, it's kind of weird that I had to kind of walk towards the road to see this airplane, but I guess it makes it look cool when you're driving on this road. This is a C5, uh, C54 Skymaster. Ooh, and it's a bomber apparently. Okay, I thought this was a transport plane, but it's not. It's a bomber. Because candy bomber. Oh, okay, yeah, they use this plane during the Berlin crisis. After World War II, the Soviets and the uh, Allied fa forces um, split uh, Berlin between the Soviet Union and the rest of the countries. And um, the Soviets wanted uh, communist control over the uh, over Germany or whatever. So they built this huge wall. And a lot of, uh, you know, how communism works, uh, communism is not really that good. Uh, a lot of people are are starving. So the U.S. and a few other countries use these airplanes to drop supplies like candy and food and stuff over, over into the Soviet side of Berlin. So they use this type of plane, which is actually really sick, you know. Also, let's take another, get another view of the F-4. Which is amazing, by the way. You know, you know what? We'll be back for that one. We'll be back for this one. We gotta talk about this plane. Right here, you will see these. These are rocket engines, right? What they would do is during takeoff, this plane would... People have been putting rocks in here. So the rocks are not supposed to be in here, but there's people that would the rocks and put them in here, you know? Um... What they would do is during takeoff, this plane would use these thrusters, which would accelerate that plane more and have it take off. So they use these to take off easily, easier. And I'm pretty sure GTA 5 has something pretty similar. You know what? This plane is based, uh, this, uh, not, not based, oh my gosh. You scared me. You scared me, man. Okay. Um, the, the GTA 5, ta uh, Titan, ro not rocket, the GTA 5 Titan airplane was probably based off of this thing because it looks like that one plane from GTA 5. Um, this is called a, a C-130 Hercules? This is an AC-130? Oh, there's a fighter jet. Guys, there's a fighter jet. We gotta capture that. Oh, that's sick. You guys can hear the plane. It sounds like someone coming over here, but instead the plane's already flying by. That's sick, and I was gonna get that on camera. There's the rocket engines again that would boost the plane up. Uh, so this is an AC-130, which is cool. Doesn't have the guns on the side. Maybe that's a different plane I was thinking of. So right here, this is uh, this is a bomber from World War II, a long-range bomber. This is where they dropped nuclear bombs from, uh, like the Nova Gay. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's called the uh, Nova Gay. And this plane is called the B-29 Super Fortress. It's a bomber. Uh, yeah, it's a bomber. Bomber. Obama. No, I'm just kidding. It's a bomber. And they drop nuclear weapons out of it, like the little boy and the fat boy, or whatever it's called. Um, really sick looking. The, p the propellers are huge, dude. Um, and this is probably the compartment where they would probably drop the nukes out of. And they used one of these planes over Japan before to uh, detonate a nuclear bomb. 
So it's a really cool, impressive looking plane. That's a window probably, so you can look at the nuclear bomb while it drops, or look at the, um, or look at the mushroom cloud as it climbs. It's really sick. So yeah, this is the B, not B, yeah, the B-29 Stratofortress, you know? Really impressive bomber in World War II, you know? And, you know, this plane right here is responsible for ending the war in World War II after dropping the atomic bombs on Japan, you know? Oh, no way. No way. Those are missiles. There's missiles. And there's another fire jet. There's another one. We I run. I saw another one. I just saw another fighter jet. Went over the window. Over the, uh, went over a building. It looked like an F-22 Raptor, sort of, maybe. I couldn't see it, but... Oh, dang, I missed it. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so this is another nuclear bomber. Uh, this is a newer nuclear bomber. This is, uh... I think it's a B-29. I, I could be wrong. Um, these are newer bomb. These are the newer... Uh, these are the newer types of nuclear bombers or long-range bombers which can be used to drop nuclear bombs but luckily this airplane hasn't been used to serve that role yet and honestly let's keep it that way but with everything going on in Ukraine right now um, who really knows and that's sick these are supposed to be landing legs I guess not landing legs landing lights the landing legs are sick because usually uh there should be only one landing leg right here, but they put two in, which is really interesting. And B-22, Strata Fortress. So it has the same name as that airplane over there, which I think is kind of interesting. Uh, geez, that's a big airplane. Yeah, they, they uh, this is the US's strategical nuclear bomber, and they also could uh, drop conventional bombs. And they use this airplane in Afghanistan, Iraq, and I think maybe Desert Storm. I could be wrong on that. I'm not a military expert. Just a very cool looking plane. And I believe this is a transport plane or a mobile air command center that the Army uses. The Army, the Air Force uses. Not exactly, no, I don't know exactly what they use this plane for. It has its elevators. Oh guys, there it is, there, this is a fighter jet. I, oh, that is so sick. That is so sick, dude. Woohoo! That's awesome! Oh, that's awesome. Oh, man. Oh, man. That is so sick. That is so sick. This is... Okay, this is a tanker. Never mind. So, this... They use this airplane as a tanker, right? So, they can refuel aircraft, like fighter jets. SR-71s, you know? All that other aircraft. And right there, I believe, is a cruise missile, but we're not going to focus on that too much. Pretty cool airplane. Not sure why they had to take the engines out of it, but I don't know why. I wish they would have left the engines in. That wouldn't be cool, but then again, people probably would play with the propellers or something. And that wouldn't be good. Okay, right here, I think these are ballistic missiles. Not ICBMs, just ballistic missiles. I could be wrong. And they're probably deactivated too. And these are cool as well. Uh, that's just really cool. Oh, you know what? This is this is an intercontinental ballistic missile. This is a Minuteman. This is what the U.S. Uh, military used to use in case uh, we got attacked by the Soviet Union. They would launch this missile towards the Soviet Union in the attack in the event of a nuclear attack on the United States. No idea what this is. This looks like a cruise missile. Maybe it's nuclear. I don't know. If you guys have anything about it, let me know. Yeah, this is Minuteman. A Minuteman missile is a nuclear uh, missile, which is actually kind of cool, you know? Which is very, very, very sick. Highly doubt there's an actual nuclear weapon inside. They probably removed it for safety reasons. But who knows? <laughs> that is really cool to see all that. Um, they need to put another airplane right here, you know? But maybe one day. Here's another view. Right there, that's where they fuel the airplane I'm pretty sure or it comes out right there I'm not exactly sure but some really cool stuff that's for sure um we have this airplane over here um it's a twin propeller plane my guess maybe it's a transport plane 
it's the same as the one AC-130, but um, same roll, but it's like an older version of that. It's a C-123 pro provider, and it's been used in uh, Vietnam. So yes, I was correct. It's like a pre predecessor to the AC-130, which is a cool looking airplane too. It's really old. You guys can see the paint coming off. Keep in mind, they probably have these planes out here rotting. They're probably not as they're probably not doing as much work as the planes inside of the hangar. These airplanes are just probably out here getting exposed getting exposed to the elements. So, so really cool. This airplane looks like a uh, another transport one, and it's made in Utah apparently, which is actually really cool. Um, this is the C-119 flying boxcar. And this is an interesting plane. It's like a transport plane mixed with a twin propeller one, you know, with the It's like a twin fuselage kind of. It's really cool looking. And it's like a tr another transport plane, you know? And uh yeah, I think they would have used this in World War II. Well, you know what? Not probably not World War II, probably Korea. Most likely they probably used this in Korea more than anything else. Um Right here, this is a transport plane. They would transport like generals or something in, I would imagine. Oh, it's a medical train because, not train, a medical plane because it transfers uh, um, injured troops. And it allows wounded personnel to be effectively loaded onto the plane. Wow. So it's like more of a medical transport plane. That's awesome, actually. another view of that and these propellers are absolutely huge let me tell you there's another plane up there but it's not a jet at all that is sick right here this is the flying classroom what an interesting name Imagine if you went to school in an airplane. The T-29 literally served as a flying classroom for, na for new navigators and radio operators. The inside of a T-29 included 14 training centers, each equipped with a map table, uh, a Lorden scope, alternative, and radio comp uh, compass panel. So this is an awesome airplane. It's like a flying cr classroom. They use this plane to train people. That's awesome. Here's the back of the F4 Phantom, you know. Once again, they covered up the engines for some reason, the jet engines. Not sure what the purpose of that is, but it's awesome. We have two more aircraft, and then we're going to end our tour here at uh, Hill, uh, at the Hill Air Force Museum base. I don't know. Uh, hold up. Hill Aerospace Museum. There you go. Right here, this is the C-45 uh, Expector. And they use this in World War II. It's another fighter in World War II. I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, go around and see around it. This looks like a stainless steel airplane, and this is probably where you go to enter it. Wow. Look at the paint. It's like rusting away, sort of, you know? It's insane. Right here, this looks like a weird, interesting uh, helicopter. It looks like a banana, kind of, like a metal banana. That's what it kind of reminds me of. The work her, the work, uh, the workhorse. And it is a flying banana, that's awesome. Search and rescue in a flying banana. That is actually really sick. So I'm gonna end my coverage here at the Hills uh, Aerospace Museum. It's awesome, I saw all the airplanes. I, and I'm pretty satisfied with this trip, you know? Super happy that I saw all this crazy stuff at this Air Force base, you know? Saw some jets flying above, which I'm super happy for because I wanted to see that too. Favorite plane has to be this big one over here, the Globemaster 2. Mm, so amazing. But anyways, guys, like and subscribe. Uh, uh, subscribe to Joey Gaming. Uh, subscribe to, not Joey Gaming. Subscribe to Joey's vlogs and uh, have a great day. See ya, peace. Dreams. I push a mind to a limit where it needs to be. I work like I got vision, I don't need to see. I'm picking my